Twitter's hard to evaluate. It's, uh, it, they, they have a lot of potential. It's a horribly mismanaged company. <laughs> Um, the people, you know, probably a lot of pot smoking going on there, but, uh, <laughs> wow. but um, this was billionaire Peter Thiel, who in 2014 was identifying one of the many problems at Twitter. It is not confirmed how much smoking CEO Dick Costello was doing at the time, but many echoed this criticism. Are you going to have your job by the end of the year? <laughs> Twitter's user base was stagnating, and even Costello recognized that he was on the hot seat. I'd like to first say that it had to be an email in which I used crass language like we suck that ended up getting leaked to the press instead of my one of my sort more sophisticated uh, tomes. <laughs> on June 11, 2015, Costello announced that he was stepping down as CEO. Despite his resignation, the media gleefully continued to predict Twitter's demise, seeing it as another Yahoo, MySpace, or AOL. However, in 2017, these articles began to disappear. Twitter was growing once again, and this growth has only accelerated. What happened? This video will go through how Jack Dorsey saved Twitter. Back in the beginning, Twitter was a tech darling. Gone. Hi, it's Friday Live, and I'm on Twitter for the first time. <laughs> Sitting next to me is Evan Williams, the co-founder of Twitter. Can you believe all this Tweedly D stuff going on? <laughs> How did it come to life? It was founded in early 2006 by Ev Williams, Jack Dorsey, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass. Ev Williams was the legend at the time because he started Blogger in 1999, which sold to Google in 2003, giving him a job at Google and $10 million. Biz Stone was then hired by Ev to work for him at Google. Uh, Ev sent me a note that says, how about you come work here for me? So the first time we actually met was when he picked me up at the airport to take me to work. But Ev grew tired of working at such a large company and left in October 2004 to start a podcasting firm called Odeo with his neighbor Noah Glass. Finally, there was Jack Dorsey. Dorsey was programming in a coffee shop in late 2005 when he noticed the semi-famous Williams walk in. He befriended him and the next day fired off his resume. Despite being 29, he admits to never applying to a job before. Uh, was my first resume and it said Jack, period, life, work, and play. And it just listed a bunch of things. I'd never written a, a resume before, but it was enough to catch uh, Evan Williams and Noah Glass's attention. Unfortunately, in just a couple of months, Odeo's business model was already in crisis and it had to change its strategy. You know, we, we shifted a bunch of our strategy because um, Apple entered uh, into the space with a, with a directory. Rather than shut down the firm, in early 2006, Ev decided to hold hackathons, allowing employees to explore new ventures. This eventually led to Jack presenting his idea. One of the guys I hired was an engineer named Jack Dorsey. And a year later, we were trying to decide which way to go with Odeo. Jack presented an idea that he'd been tinkering around with for a number of years that was based around sending simple status updates to friends. Jack was inspired by online conversation with friends who, in the early 2000s, often communicated information through their away statuses. He felt that public sharing of these statuses was an entire idea. Jack, Biz, and one other programmer were then given the go-ahead to work on the software. The name Twitter came from Noah Glass, who noticed a jittery phone whenever a status was updated. No one liked the name Jitter, so Noah consulted the dictionary and found Twitter, which they all felt described the company perfectly. On March 21st, Dorsey sent out the first tweet, saying, Just setting up my Twitter. The app was officially launched to the public in July. Despite funding most of the company, Ev let Jack call the shots. And I just take the glory for these guys as well. <laughs> you made it up, right? It's all your fault? Uh, no, I didn't. It's, it's more Jack's fault. It grew rapidly following its success at the South by Southwest Music Festival in March 2007. Since the iPhone had not yet been released, festival goers used TV screens showing tweets to find the hottest venues or bars at the festival. Twitter was the standout tech contributor and won an award for its technology. And the winner is, you can check your cell phones, Twitter. Yeah! I would like to thank everyone in 140 characters or less. And I just did. The site passed 100,000 users in April, and Ev chose to spin it out as its own separate company. The graduating of an NQB. NQB? Is that a word? Of course it is. 
one who's been incubated. He also made Jack CEO, giving him 20% of the stock while retaining 70% for himself. The reason he chose not to be CEO is he saw himself as someone who could incubate new ideas like Twitter, and he was less interested in running the company for now. But as Twitter's growth exploded, he regretted this decision. He also felt Jack was doing a poor job because the company was chaotic. When Jack made his first acquisition in July 2008, he immediately underwhelmed the new team by asking them to fill in large positions like head of engineering. Additionally, the site was known to crash frequently. Ev also despised Jack's many hobbies, which included drawing and fashion. I left programming. <laughs> I left programming again. I went to uh, the fashion art school in San Francisco. Um, you don't. It turns out you don't start with. Uh, with jeans, because pants are the hardest thing to make, so you start with skirts. This culminated with William saying, you can either be a dressmaker or CEO, not both. As the largest shareholder, Ev did not have too much trouble pushing Jack out in October 2008, and then welcoming himself as the new CEO. He also made it seem as if Jack was being promoted to chairman. What really happened? Ev put Dorsey in a ceremonial chairman position, rather than firing him to not make Twitter look so chaotic. And because Jack was a large shareholder, so the board felt he needed to be handled carefully. Jack also didn't feel like he was getting a promotion. It's, uh, it was really hard. I, I, I cried that day. I mean, it was, uh, I, I went away to a cave <laughs> yeah. and it was, it was pretty dark. Despite being despondent, Jack would start Square two months later. We discuss Square's success in our video, How Big is Square, which is linked to in the description. Jack and Twitter's path would one day cross again, but for now, Ev Head was calling the shots and his first call came from Mark Zuckerberg. While Facebook was over nine times the size of Twitter, Zuckerberg worried in late 2008 that it could surpass his company given Twitter's massive 1300% growth. Ev and Biz were then invited to the Facebook offices for acquisition talks. They met Mark for lunch, but explained a rather awkward encounter. While waiting in the line for food, they asked Mark if they could skip the line given that he was CEO, but Mark replied, that's not how we do things around here. Annoyed, the two left before an offer, but Zuckerberg would not be deterred. Two weeks later, in November, he offered $500 million for the company, which was turned down. Ev felt Twitter was too important to sell because he saw it as an important news medium. In early 2009, a plane landed in the Hudson River in New York, and Twitter broke the news well before the traditional media and in a more in-depth way. Later in the year, Twitter played such an important role during Iranian protests that the US government told it to not shut down its website for maintenance as this risks slowing the protesters' progress. Its valuation also continued to soar, surpassing $1 billion in late 2009. Despite this valuation, the company was understaffed, having less than 100 employees, and in late 2009, Ev was convinced to hire Dick Costello as Chief Operations Officer. On the day of his hiring, Dick would make what would become a rather ironic tweet. I'll tell you how long I've regretted that first tweet that I sent as COO of Twitter. That <laughs> gets brought up all the time. So He was well known in the tech scene because he had sold FeedBurner to Google in 2007 for 100 million, and he was an early investor in Twitter. Unbeknownst to Ev, the hiring was also wanted by the board because it was increasingly questioning his decisions, which included an inability to monetize. Monetizing is the question everybody asks. How do you monetize this? We don't know for sure, but we have some ideas. <laughs> it's gonna, I think like the product itself, it's gonna have to evolve over time. We're gonna try things and see what works. Dick helped monetize the platform in April 2010, but the site continued to crash. Twitter also lacked products like a phone app, so it had to buy another company to fill this hole. The board also found Ev to be disinterested in running the day-to-day -day operations, leading to another dramatic coup. On October 4th, Ev could be found throwing up in a garbage can after learning that he had been fired. Did Ev puke in, in, in a, in, in, inside a garbage can before he went on to tell the company that he's leaving? Yeah, that was true, he did, he barfed. Despite being a large shareholder, Ev no longer had control, but he was able to briefly turn his firing into what appeared to be a demotion. He was now Twitter's product strategy lead, but he soon found that no one listened to his ideas, so he left in early 2011. With Ev's departure, a familiar face could return, Jack Dorsey. Welcome to The Market is Open. We will soon discuss how Jack Dorsey saved Twitter, but we first wanted to introduce you to the great Courses Plus, whose support helped us make this video. 
Feel free to support our sponsors as they help us make these videos and allow us to do in-depth research. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription learning platform where you can get unlimited access to many courses. It has over 11,000 video lectures, which could improve your business skills such as in Excel and finance, or simply if you love learning, you can take more fun courses like The Rise of Rome. But what distinguishes The Great Courses Plus are these classes are taught by true professionals, so nature courses are taught by professors or even the National Geographic. A new course I'm interested in taking is Introduction to Machine Learning. My favorite video to make was on Mobileye, who is a leader in autonomous driving, and I'm excited to better explore how machine learning works. Right now, The Great Courses Plus is giving a free one-month trial, and you can visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash the market is open, or you can get a free trial by clicking the link in the description. There's so much knowledge to gain, so thank you for supporting The Great Courses Plus and us. Dick Costello was promoted to CEO, but unfortunately he was more of an operations guy, so he increasingly relied on Jack for product decisions. I asked Jack to come back to help us think about a product strategy in the broadest sense, because as the inventor of the product, I felt that he spoke with a fluency about the product. Though Jack did have limited time. Jack is a very unusual person in that he has two full-time, he's unusual for many, many reasons, but he has two full-time jobs. He also is CEO of Square. By early 2012, Jack was overwhelmed and cut back his time at Twitter. Still, Dick relied on him to settle product decisions. This lack of vision led him to routinely get excited about new ideas that were often not core to Twitter, like Vine, a video app. You have a new video service called Vine, which is a six second loop. Tell me why you developed that product and, and why six seconds? Yeah, so uh, great. I, I love talking about Vine and I could talk about it for hours. Um, Finally, so we have something he'll talk about. <laughs> Another questionable acquisition was Fabric, which was bought in 2013. Dick even dedicated his 2014 address to discuss the significance of this acquisition. Despite being popular with developers, the software couldn't be monetized and it was later sold to Google for a nominal amount. Vine and Fabric were two of his 43 acquisitions, which works out to one every 40 days, far higher than the other two CEOs. The main issue with lacking focus was it meant the same problems remained over time. As we do that, mm -hmm. it's more and more important that Twitter become easier and simpler and more consistent to use across all platforms and across all devices. So, those of you who don't know is when you meant to send a private message, you end up sending a, a public tweet. Uh, I didn't have a conversation with them about it. Some people use it as an example of a platform that is still, to some, difficult to use. Yeah, look, uh, we've been clear about the fact that we have a lot of work to do to make it easier to use Twitter. The complicated product led to slow user growth, and Costello's time was nearly up. Are you going to have your job by the end of the year? <laughs> exactly two weeks later, he sent out the following tweet, welcoming Jack back as CEO. Seven years after he had been ousted, Jack was officially back. His new task? Save Twitter. Dorsey may have left as some punk kid, but he returned as somewhat of a celebrity figure, considering he was running another highly successful company, Square. Still, he felt it necessary to inspire confidence, so in October he gave employees one-third of his Twitter stock, which was roughly 20% of his net worth, or $210 million. He also appealed to them by showing his passion for Twitter. This is the first Twitter shirt we ever made. I have seven of them. Wear one for every day of the week. But to fix Twitter, he needed to accept that it had major problems. It was very normal in 2015 to 2016 to see articles like, why do normal people struggle to use Twitter? While Costello was not happy with Twitter's product, he felt revenue growth was a proxy for success. Well, look, I mean, last year we, uh, as we mentioned in 2014, we grew revenue top line 97% year over year. So the business is extraordinarily healthy. Jack immediately realized that revenue would fall if user growth remained flat or declined, meaning Twitter had major problems. To improve growth, he narrowed Twitter's focus onto its core strength. Helping and serving the use cases that we know Twitter is strong at, and the number one is showing what's happening now. This meant he was willing to kill off many of Costello's acquisitions, including Fabric and Vine, as these were non-core. Jack decided that incrementalism was important even when many wanted bigger, splashier changes. As a user, I have to say that it seems like the changes you've been making have been very small. And they've made the service better, but they haven't really been big changes. Why aren't you changing Twitter more? 
Jack's plan. Twitter's gonna be a whole lot simpler. It's gonna be a lot simpler to use, and especially around tweeting. So we're focusing a lot of our energy on making sure that when people tweet, it makes sense. He noted many confusing things. For example, if someone tweeted a picture, they lost characters. Other confusing things included. Uh, one of the things that we noticed is there's this little hidden rule where if you put an at name to start your tweet, it's actually only seen by that person you're referencing and the people that follow the both of you. He changed favorites to likes, added polls, and allowed for timelines to be sorted by newest or top tweets, which all increased engagement. 140 characters here to stay forever? It's sacrosanct, yes. Why is it sacrosanct? Because it works. <laughs> That's a good reason. Jack was also able to make controversial decisions such as expanding to 280 characters. Another bold change was distancing Twitter from being a social media site to an information network. One, I mean, one of the things we, we started the service with um, this concept of following an account uh, as an example. Um, and I, I don't believe that's why people actually come to Twitter. I believe Twitter is, is best as, a, as an interest-based network. Twitter added information network-like features like Moments, which is now called Explore, helping users find relevant news. It also enabled users to follow topics where it has added thousands and plans to launch thousands more. Um, give us some direct feedback, critique. What are we doing poorly? What could we be doing better? I think it would be helpful to differentiate between real uh, Twitter has eliminated a lot of its spam. Three years ago, spam was everywhere. For example, in this search of GameStop stock, but today most of the responses appear to be human. He even took suggestions from users who were mocking Twitter with RIP hashtags. He incorporated some of their suggestions like bookmarks. Leads in my third lesson is, you know, you, you need to listen. You need to be still and, and really listen to, to what's going on around mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. um, and let that inform and let that inspire mm. uh, your next steps. It seems hard to be still and listen when you've got your, you have 300 followers, you're following 300 people or whatever. Minute. While he credits the users for coming up with many of Twitter's ideas. Just took it and they defined it for themselves and they really, you know, everything you see successful about Twitter, the retweet, the at reply, the word tweet, all came from the users. It didn't come from the company. But he understood you can't give the user everything they want. I owe Twitter. Can we get that edit button in 2020? The answer is no. Users have always wanted an edit button, but while an edit button benefits an individual, it damages the quality of an information network as future posts will be inaccurate if a prior post is changed. Jack Dorsey's master plan has already started. The first part was transitioning from a social media site into an information network. The second part is monetizing the information network. He plans to do what YouTube did for video. This is why Twitter has introduced new products like newsletters, and it has allowed users to pay their favorite creators. If writers can make a decent income on Twitter, then more will flock to create content on the platform, starting a virtuous cycle. Essentially, this will make Twitter a newspaper. Check out Twitter flying to new highs of 3.7%. The company forecasting at its analyst day that it will reach 315 million daily users and double revenue by the end of 2023. So now that Twitter is flying to new heights should you buy the stock. We think Twitter stock is attractive. Twitter's daily active users have surged at over 20% for the last five quarters. This gives it confidence that revenue can double from 3.7 billion in 2020 to over 7.5 billion by 2023. But even after 2023, Twitter will be positioned for years of growth for three reasons. As it grows, advertisers will spend more on advertising, so ad rates will increase. Twitter has attractive new monetization ideas that were outlined. Twitter's system is fixed, so it can now develop more experimental projects like copying other social media features like Snapchat's disappearing message, which Twitter calls fleets, and it can create audio communication rooms called Twitter spaces. This is our Twitter valuation dashboard and discounted cash flow model that can be downloaded for free on our Patreon page and you can play with the inputs to see what you think Twitter is worth. We believe the stock can double. However, this isn't stock advice, so feel free to adjust our model. Also, if you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments or leave a like. We spend a lot of time researching these topics, so we appreciate your support here and on Patreon. Thank you for watching.